what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video i've got something super exciting for you guys today something that was kind of unexpected and wasn't planning on doing just quite yet but let's get right to it so first i want to go ahead and welcome each and every one of you guys for joining me I'd like to thank all of my new subscribers and current subscribers that have been here since the very beginning. I really appreciate you guys and hope that we can continue to keep making videos for you guys and help you guys out in your journey with your Camaros or any other cars in the future down the line. Here is my 2019 Camaro SS and we've pretty much done a lot of stuff visually guys from the rear wing to the body kit, wheels, the wrap. But one thing that I've been wanting to do for a long time is, of course, get rid of this big wheel gap. Now, on the drag pack, it actually does not look bad at all. It, those big wheel gaps help with the transition of the weight and all that. And the car does really well at the track, but there's still a lot of gap here. So today we're gonna go ahead and remedy that, remedy that by installing some really really awesome drop springs that i've been wanting to try out here they are guys these are the powell yyz drop springs and these of course are the rears we've got the fronts i was able to find these used so new these are about 400 dollars they're one of the more expensive drop springs that you can actually find but there is some very, very, very cool engineering behind these drop springs. So for the rears, if you guys notice here, there is two coils that are a lot tighter than the rest. That's because these are dual rated drop springs uh, rate of in the back. So they got two um, rate of compression, I believe is what it's called. And what this allows is for pretty much OEM style handling normal conditions and all that, but under very increased load, give us that extra spring tension needed to help with either getting out of a corner or in our hard launches when the car is squatting. So definitely, definitely a lot different than what you would get from your normal springs uh, that are usually just all linear and can either be stiffer or softer, depending on what you're looking for. This is kind of the best of both worlds and it's gonna give us that OEM ride quality while still giving us a one inch drop all the way around. So I'm super excited to try that out. So I'm super excited. I can't wait to get this process underway. And of course, I'm gonna bring you guys along to show you guys just how you do the install of the drop springs on your Camaro. And if there's any issues or things along the line, I'll definitely let you guys know. But for now, let's go ahead and give you guys a look factory. One last look of how it looks on the stock factory springs. And then we're gonna get the car in and get it raised up, remove the wheels, and get right to work. So let's get to it. We have one, two bolts up here that we're gonna need to loosen up the nuts on. And then we've got a third up here on this end link from the sway bar that we have to remove. And then this small 10 millimeter brake line uh, bracket here in this clip here. That is all that's holding the bottom of the strut assembly to the knuckle and the rotating assembly here. And then up top, we've got three bolts that are holding it. And of course you see there's these little guide pins, but kind of keep in mind, see which one has the higher raised point. As you guys see over here, this one's not as high, but it's basically gonna give you a guide point to putting it back in. So what I'm gonna do is remove the sway bar and link first. Then I'm going to remove the brake lines. And finally, I'll get these two done to loosen the bottom end. And when that's all done, then we can come and get these three and loosen the whole strut assembly out. So we are back here, guys. I've gone ahead and removed the brake line 
10 millimeter loosened up. I've loosened up the wheel speed sensor from the clip and also removed it from the knuckle here, all 10 millimeters as you guys can see. The two bolts are out and here you guys can see what I'm talking about. It's got these rib sections where you have to basically punch it out because it grabs on. And it is all apart guys. So as you guys can see, we use the spring compressors on to two coils that are visible. And that helped us remove this 18 millimeter nut that was that was covered under this cap here. So it's kind of just there. So you pop that out and then it's an 18 millimeter nut, which then has the whole thing top side. And then this cover just goes over and slides right out. So you slide that out and inside of there is this bump stop which we're gonna have to put back in the car and I believe it goes like this so this will have to be installed back into the setup and now we can install the springs so it is finally on and everything is lining up exactly where it needs to be all sit right in position and this bottom top nut guys what i ended up doing is i actually compressed this spring to allow the piston to kind of push down and get that uh screw top all the way to the top and that allows you to tighten up this bolt all the way till it seats it doesn't have a torque spec it just bottoms out and you can see it still spins freely up here. Um, again, remember these guide pins when you're installing it back up. To install it again, it's gonna be basically the same thing, guys. Because you are using, you did remove these bolts, you are gonna wanna get an alignment done. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on. I'll do the other side, and then I'll show you guys how to do the rears. Before we get to the back here, guys, I'm gonna do something as a preventative maintenance, something that I want so that I don't cause any issues should the car, once it's lowered, start rubbing on the inside of the fender well. And that is move away the harness that is right behind here. It's usually tucked up right behind touching this fender well piece. So when you put wider tires, bigger than a 305, or in my case with the drag radials, when it squats and starts maybe going inward, we don't want that tire to rub on the inside here and start causing issues electrically with that harness. So here is the harness that we're talking about guys. And you see it kind of comes up around the top and we really don't have an issue up top. The biggest issue is actually this loop here, this corner that you see here. And if you look kind of where that sits, that's right here in this little bump. And so what happens is when the car squats or you put a wider tire, this corner here ends up getting rubbed by the tire and it can eat through this harder like carpeting and eventually end up rubbing into this piece here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it out from here and I've already kind of loosened that up and we're, we're just gonna push it down under and away that way. So you see it's out of the way and so I'm gonna use a zip tie to kind of zip tie it and have it held back in that spot and it's not going to cause any issue to the wires or anything but it is going to give me a lot more clearance here so whenever this does kind of push in it's not touching that harness there moving on to the back spring guys you see it it's right there and this is going to be very simple first things first we have to remove this cover it's got four of these little pop 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 off pit clips all right guys so here what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up this strut bolt we're going to just break the bolt loose the back side bit like got a welded nut in and this is 18 millimeters here and then that is a 21 millimeter and that one we're just going to loosen it up we don't need it completely out all we need is loosen up so that this whole str like strut mount on the bottom can kind of swing down so we loosen that up we loosen this up with an 18 millimeter this is an 18 millimeter on this side, which we're gonna be removing completely, but not yet. Um, the trailing arm down here has an 18 millimeter up front, which we're gonna just loosen up to let this kind of be able to move up and down. And then here we've got an 18 millimeter on both ends and we're gonna break the nut loose and then 
just completely remove this bolt and swing the trailing arm out. Once we swing the trailing arm out, then we can remove this front bolt out of the way and get to the final step, which is removing the strut mount. But before we can remove that, we'll need to put a jack stand or something here to relieve the pressure. And everything is off guys. So we removed this one and like I said, you just gotta loosen it up, let it fall back. We've also removed the bolt back here for this piece. And we've got that there off to the side. I have the jack here supporting so that we can go ahead and remove the shock bolt. And then once we remove the shock bolt, we can drop this down and this whole piece should come down. We've already loosened up the bolt in the back and this whole thing should kind of swing downward and allow the spring to get loose. So here we have it guys. And I was actually wrong about which one was the top. So actually the smaller of the two coals are gonna be facing the bottom. And if you look at the wording on the springs, they're actually upside down. On the front side, they were upside upright this way. Um, so this is how they would have been installed if you were trying to put them in. And the wording was upright, similar to the fronts. But here, when I try putting on these uh, spring isolators, it definitely, definitely did not not seat properly on the, when I'm trying to do them reverse um, this way. So this is the way that it's supposed to sit and everything sits nice and flush. So we're gonna go ahead and install them. And this is the way I got these used so I don't have instructions for them. But you do can, you got, wanna go off of what everything fits and how everything is fitting on here. And I think we got it properly done the right way. So um, we can go ahead and put this back and basically reduce the, re produce the process. When we're putting them back, guys, we're gonna slide it back up into this housing here. And then we're gonna swing the strut bottom mount over and use the jack to gently raise it up and put the compression that we need. And remember, there is a little notch where the bottom needs to go. We're gonna clean this out and put everything back in order. Guys, look at this, I am drenched. The wheels are back on, I did finish the back, and I gotta say, the back is probably the hardest part because of the way the suspension is back there. It's a lot different than the front. The front, I can kind of move the knuckle and align everything well. The back side, the way that we did it, it's hard to really move the knuckle back and forth. You kind of have to loosen everything up. And when you're putting it all back together, things aren't right where they need to be. And it just takes a while to get everything lined up. But it, everything is done. So let's go ahead and drop the car and see how it looks. Now, I can't go ahead and have a video without giving you guys a cold start. guys check it out man it looks so much different one inch drop all the way around definitely closes up the gaps man I really loved how this turned out let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think obviously we still got to get the alignment but I mean overall Jesus Christ I mean this side is looks a lot lower on this side now i don't know if that's because of my even dri uneven driveway but or what the deal is there but god lee oh yeah definitely definitely digging this this setup here guys let me know what you think in the comments down below and i'm just whew, it's really windy sorry about the wind noise guys but let me know in the comments below what do you think i think it looks awesome and hopefully these springs perform well typically drop springs are not the best for launching and things like that but these were specifically designed for being able to have those hard launches and all that uh, especially with the dual rate in the back but yeah super super crazy i would rate this install guys probably 
a nine out of 10 on the hardness scale. It is very difficult, very hard to do, but with the right tools, you can do it. I was able to do it in the garage and it, I mean, one by myself, if I had a set of pair extra hands, someone that could help me, it'd be so much easier, a lot faster, but we were able to get it done. So super excited about that. And I can't wait to get this aligned so we can go try it out at the track, guys. But anyways, that is it for today's video, guys. That is how you install drop springs on your Camaros. And like I said, it's probably diff a little bit more difficult than doing something like a cold air intake, but if you have the time and if you have the tools, you can definitely get it done. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.